Thank you for coming through to this video where I'm going to attempt to explain, in simple terms, Einstein's theory of relativity. So, without any further ado, let's get to it. In the early 20th century, Albert Einstein developed the scientific framework known as the theory of relativity. The concept of the theory of relativity was to understand space, time and gravity. And there was two main parts to this. They were the special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity. And we'll look into both of those, but let's first take a look at the special theory of relativity. So in 1905, Einstein's publication of the special theory of relativity explained how multiple objects move in relation to each other when there was no forces of gravity present to influence their movement. And there was two main assumptions and principles to the special theory of relativity. And the first one is that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. All this really means is that the fundamental principles of physics don't change regardless of whether you're moving at a constant velocity or at rest. In other words, the property of matter continues in its existing state of rest, so not moving, or in uniform motion in a straight line, unless the state is changed by some external force. So if there's movement at a constant velocity, or there is no movement at all, the fundamental principles of physics don't change, regardless of either of the two. And to define whether or not an object is moving, that object has to be compared with something else, another object. This is the only way to measure movement, because there is no absolute fixed ground zero reference point from which motion can be measured or can be described in any other way. And so the second tenet of the special theory of relativity is that in a vacuum, an area devoid of any matter or particles, light travels at a constant speed. That's because there is no existing matter or particles to deflect the light and interfere with its constant trajectory. In this unhindered state, light travels at about 299,792,458 meters per second. That is over 670 million miles per hour. This is the fastest that information or energy can move. And to make all of this easier to refer to, Einstein indicated this with the letter C. So the letter C simply refers to the speed of light. And the speed of light is constant for all those observing it, regardless of how much or how little the observers are moving. Light moving through the cosmos in this way is its very characteristic and true nature. And so it's these two assumptions of special relativity that lead to some astounding conclusions. One is the dilation of time. The dilation of time is when an object in motion is moving so fast that it perceives time as passing more slowly than it would for a stationary observer. Incredibly, this is what happens when things move close to the speed of light. Another phenomenon is length contraction. This is when an object in motion appears shorter along its direction of motion than it is at its resting length, as measured by a stationary observer. These ideas of the special theory of relativity are expanded into including gravity in Einstein's general theory of relativity, which was published in 1915. According to this definition, gravity is the bending of space-time brought on by the existence of mass and energy. So according to this hypothesis, big objects like planets and stars bend or distort space-time. This causes other things that are travelling close by to get caught up in this curvature and therefore being pulled into curved motions. And the phenomena of gravitational time dilation, when time moves more slowly in the presence of a potential gravitational field, is also predicted by the general theory of relativity. 
and experiments have been conducted to observe and validate this effect. So in general, the theory of relativity revolutionised how we think about gravity, space and time. It serves as a foundation for our current knowledge of the cosmos on both the small and large scales and has undergone considerable testing and confirmation through various experiments and observations. So I hope you benefited from that and if you did please give me a thumbs up it really helps to get my content out there and please consider subscribing because I shall be putting more content on very similar to this explained simply. So again thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon.